there we are. There's a lot of people coming in. I think we have about 300 people signed up today, which is very exciting. We're just going to give the ones that are going to join us today the chance of actually joining before we get going. Hello, everybody who just joined. We're just going to wait another few seconds for the rest of our participants to join in, and then we'll get underway. Seventy-two sounds like a good number to get going on. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us today in this conversation about nanobubbles. I'm joined by Jan-Erik Hagensen, who is the senior director of Molle in Norway, north of Oslo, close to the airport, as he just told me. Um, we'll help us, he will help us understand today the topic of nanobubbles. And over the next hour, we will cover the emergence of the technology, its general functionality, as well as its specific application to aquaculture. We are recording this conversation today so feel free to share this at a later point if you think there's somebody in your network who might find it useful. If you look in the bottom bar, you'll find a Q&A function. You might have seen this before in other Zoom webinars. Um, there you are able to post any type of question you like, and uh, these will be visible for all. If you head to that Q&A bar, you'll see a little thumb. That means you can vote these up, and all the questions that get voted up at the end, we will try to ask. We are allocating about 20 minutes of time at the end for Q&A, so make sure you ask them in time and make sure you check what's in the question list to vote those up that you that interest you the most. All right, let's take this away. Jan Eric, thanks for being with us today. Would you like to say hello? Thanks for having me. So yes, um, I'm very uh, delighted to be, to be here and, uh, and uh, shed some light on all things nanobubbles. Absolutely. Very good. Um, let's let's get straight into it. Um, all right, so Mole, the initial idea, and I know I'm pronouncing it wrong. I've practiced it. I'm just not getting there, but well, you know, we might get there at the end of the day. And yeah. you can correct me now. The initial, how did it all come together? The initial idea. Well, I mean, um, it, it all started uh, back in uh, in 2016 uh, with uh, with uh, Bruce Shulton and Warren Russell. Uh, they are the, uh, the the founders of of Moliere. Um, and it, it all started uh, when they uh, they had a project in uh, in the Middle East, and um, it was it was um, uh, it was a project where, where they 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 had the uh, they were they had to develop a, a certain solution to to uh, to oxygenate um, uh, for an aerobic water treatment process, and that's when Bruce Shulton uh, came across this this method. To introduce nanobubbles, and that's and from there it uh, it uh, it took off. So um, it's been a fantastic journey since, and it started. Uh, they started adding value within horticulture and agriculture, um, which is one of the biggest markets for venturi injectors and and, and adding oxygen in, in that space, and where they could see that uh, nanobubbles had an effect on on uh, plant plant health and, and resilience. Uh, giving better uh, better um, um, yields and crop yields, and also within the wastewater uh, treatment uh, area, seabed remediation, and also surface water. So now, with when with I'm, what, what I'm going to talk about uh, within aquaculture, uh, we'll get to focus on fish welfare and water treatment in that same space. So what we're doing here is is reducing input factors. Um, to, to make to, to give a, a much more sustainable usage of oxygen while re reducing energy as well. So some of these uh, details I'll, I'll get into. Very good, very good. Thank you. Where, where did you come into the picture? Uh, well, I, I came into the picture, uh, well, my, my first introduction to the company was back in 2020. I was working for another company. Uh, so through my career, I'd, I've been dedicated to supply the, uh, the aquaculture industry with products and technology. 
uh, to help them with the development curve and increase their efficiency, uh, ensure fish welfare uh, while lowering inputs uh, in, this sustainable, in a sustainable way. Um, it's been through uh, fluid conveyance and fluid conveyance is very related to, to this technology. So um, when I came across it, um, uh, I worked 23 years in, in this industrial company. Uh, and when I saw uh, the, the, the results and the bar being risen in so many ways, I was actually speechless. So, and you know, I thought honestly that I would never change jobs after working 23 years in a company. Uh, but, um, you know, being a part of this oxygenation paradigm shift is the absolute best decision that I've made. So it's, it's really fun being a part of this, uh, this, uh, this change in how to oxygenate and how to uh, improve water. Okay, exciting, very exciting. Uh, I love it when somebody is this convinced yeah, it's, and motivated. It's, it's fun. In his, yeah, very good. Um, Okay, so let, let's let's get a little bit into the technology background. I think this is also what the most people most people are here for. Generally, oxygenation methods in the market right now, not just in aquaculture, but generally they are largely cones, diffusers, venturi systems, or sparges. Mm -hmm. They are all fairly different in themselves. Um, but then towards nanobubbles, how mm -hmm. do they differ? Right? And also to the delivery method that Molnar has. Well. Um... Well, that would depend on you know what we're what we're comparing to here. Uh, you, you mentioned a few, but you know typically we're talking about oxygen utilization versus energy usage. So you have you know on one of the scale, on one end of that scale, you have diffuser technologies that introduce bulk gas into water, and with the buoyancy of those type of bubbles, uh, way too much oxygen is wasted. So, and, and then you have on the other end, you have oxygen cones though we're talking about gas transfer efficiency may be, may be efficient if, if they are um, run and operated uh, very evenly. Um, traditionally, they demand more uh, energy and have a much larger footprint. So, so but, the, but the real difference is, um, is the extraordinary properties of nanobubbles. And none of these, these uh, traditional methods that you've uh, mentioned have that. So that's that's where we really differ is is the water treatment properties of nanobubbles, and then there is um, one extra dimension to just the oxygenation, and that is the buffering effect of nanobubbles, keeping uh, an oxy oxygen level more stable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that water treatment property um, that is very interesting because obviously you are addressing two different problems here with one technology that used to be not directly connected to this. Mm -hmm. um, what, what are the properties of nanobubbles that basically lead to that water treatment effect? Well, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a few properties that, 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 that uh, go in, in symbiosis with, with each other. Um, when, you, when you get down to the size of a nanobubble, uh, you suddenly uh, enter a realm of different uh, physical um, laws. So when you get as a direct result of the size, they, they get a, a negative surface charge. And this is this uh, negative surface charge is, is one of the one of the most uh, fascinating uh, aspects of, of nanobubbles. Um, they they because of the surface charge, firstly, uh, and, the, and the size, um, well, the surface charge itself makes them, uh, they're negatively charged, so they, 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 uh, they repel each other. They, they don't coalesce like, like bigger bubbles do. Uh, and also because of the size, they don't, the Brownian motion uh, overwinds the, the buoyancy. So they, they do not break surface like a micro bubble would. Um, the negative surface charge uh, can perform chemistry. So like, for example, in brass systems, they work as a natural coagulant, helping skimmers and drum filters uh, increase performance while lowering energy usage, for example, from blowers that are in, a, in such a system. So with that, you can, you can reduce the energy usage. Um, and this is then reducing the total system, suspended solids in a RAS system, for example. 
Um, also, when it comes to the biofilter performance, we see that uh, we can improve the performance there because we see the uh, that nanobubbles have the effect to uh, improve the nitrification ki ki kinetics. So higher nitrate, uh, nitrate production and a reduced nitrite accumulation. And that means a significant reduction in inhibitory conditions for nit nitrobacteria. So the reason for this is that the bubble size itself affects the microbial composition of the nitrifying bacteria, and then consequently determine the growth and thickness of biofilm to improve the efficiency of the ammonia removal. So, and that part is one of the most fascinating parts about, uh, about uh, nanobubbles. Um, mm -hmm. And you, you need to have it in a, in a, in a circuit, circulatory system to, 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 to utilize it in that sense. So it's, it's a part of wastewater uh, treatment in a sense. And it's very mm -hmm. exciting to, to bring that into, into uh, aquaculture. No, it's, it's fascinating because there's a there's an element of compounding value here over time with the bubbles and also yeah like from, from the way I understand it their small property basically changes the rules the literal physical rules around them and that changes the game for how oxygen acts and is dissolved in water it's also a thing that uh, probably most of us didn't immediately follow so what we're going to do is we we are going to drop a deck into the chat a presentation where uh, which everybody can view and download and where all this information is contained and can be reviewed, including uh, some case studies. Mm. Um, now, generally, is there a specific area um, of industry or of type of segment of process uh, where it's most applicable or maybe even areas where you still say, mm, this is not where nanobubbles play, you're better served with the traditional oxygenation system? Well, I mean, uh, wherever water, uh, water quality is, is critical, um, we play a role, um, absolutely. Um, of course, I mean, every each case is different. We're talking about uh, uh, design from from blank a blank sheet of paper, or if we're talking about a uh, a retrofit, of course, you know, we have to we have to um, approach each uh, each case according because they're all different. Um, but yeah. So generally, that, that, that there's no areas you exclude. If it's oxygenation, we can work with nanobubbles. Yeah, if it's oxygenation itself, we're talking about the uh, the, the 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 fish's oxygen need. That's one thing. Um, then you're not then you're not necessarily in the in the realm of of water treatment uh, unless it's in a uh, in a RAS system. But if we're only t thinking about that that uh, part of the equation. Uh, the extra the extra properties that that that, that are brought is the the effect that nanobubbles have when they are they're they are to be considered a, a, um, a you can call it a, a giving it giving the dissolved oxygen a, a buffering effect so you have suspended uh, a suspended reserve in the water it's not that big but it's but it is there to stabilize uh, a, a, a dissolved oxygen level that would be dissipating because of um, biological or chemical need in the water. So if you take a, uh, if, you, if you compare that to, for example, uh, cone oxygenated water and from, that, uh, from water that has nanobubbles in them, you will see that the, the, the water, the, the dissolved oxygen will be more stable because there's mm -hmm. nanobubbles present. So okay. that's, that's that part. So uh, approaching the, the, the main, question for everybody who would be interested in a system like this, how does this impact my, 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 my bottom line? Like, why does this help me? Uh, well, uh, when it comes to um, um, oxygen utilization in itself, uh, if, you, if we are talking about uh, diffuser technology, um, poor technology where uh, it's, com it's coming out through, through a, a perforated hose or, or a diffuser stone, um, this is technology where uh, the bubbles at best will be micro bubbles and they go to the surface. So there's a lot of oxygen that, that, that is wasted in that. So um, our customers see that, uh, that uh, the immediate oxygen uh, transfer efficiency is, is so high that, uh, that we, um, 
uh, they're saving a lot on oxygen usage itself. If we're talking about, say, a cone or even even a even a, uh, um, a Venturi injector, th these are these are methods that need pumps, and in some cases, many pumps, and at high pressure. And with our technology, you can take that pressure down, uh, or even uh, reduce the amount of pumps. So that's that's saying a little bit about the efficiency that, that nanobubbles have. So you are able to both uh, lower uh, oxygen usage, and if you're producing your own oxygen, you would then subsequently uh, have uh, a, say let's say you're you're producing it with a with an oxygen generator that is powered by um, diesel, for example, di di diesel generators. Uh, that oxygen generator won't need to be running that much because you're utilizing that oxygen so efficiently. So you're, mm -hmm. you are saving money in that sense, uh, energy usage. And in other cases, you can actually uh, remove, uh, uh, use less pumps, and then you're also mm -hmm. using less energy. So okay. those, Interesting. those so, are areas within, within oxygenation in itself when it comes to the system. And then when you enter the realm of nanobubbles, uh, uh, water treatment uh, properties, we're talking about um, increased uh, efficiency of your water treatment process and therefore less chemicals um, and less uh, all, the, all the input factors in the water, water treatment process become different. You are able to save money here and there in, in the process, not only on the usage, but also when it comes to uh, the input input factors of keeping that water quality good. Okay, that's fascinating. So we, we basically have two direct factors, a direct reduction of oxygen use, a yeah. direct reduction of electricity use because oxygen stays result, dissolved for longer. Mm -hmm. And then we have these interesting externalities around water treatment. And I, I think you have case studies around these water treatments that generally from my own experience and rightly so, there's no more risk averse person than somebody who is managing fish in a uh, in these quantities, and they're rightly so. Um, so um, we're we're going to have to look at very good data to be convinced of these uh, health properties of tiny oxygen. But it is a fascinating topic. Absolutely. Um, so you you talk about customers. Um, there's been a lot of technology entering aquaculture in the last few years. I've been in this industry for five six years. And um, when, which is very short. And when, when I started, it, it felt almost, compared to then, there's a lot more technology going on now um, than, than it was at the beginning. But you do differ in that way that you have systems actually deployed at large customers also in, in significant production, correct? Yes, that's correct. So yeah. both, both when it comes to sea-based, when it comes to land-based, um, yeah, both in, in Norway, Europe, Chile, Canada, so we have uh, we have systems deployed in uh, in most uh, types of production. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Um, this is I think this is fairly interesting. Based around aquaculture is still a very um, frag fragmented business in the sense that some farms are very very big, some farms are very very small but they would all benefit uh, of that level of technology. Do you have solutions for the biggest as well as for the smallest? Or is it more like, a, okay, you got to be this many tons that big a year, otherwise this isn't going to make sense? That's that's, uh, that's a very good question. Um, one, of, one of the things that, that make Molera a global leader within nanobubble technology is that we have a very scalable uh, technology. So uh, Bruce Shulton uh, invented something that was uh, scalable from down from the smallest amount of water and up to huge volumes. So it's all about uh, dimensioning this. And uh, um, there, are, there are some operating parameters to, to, to work within. So when it comes to you know, how the technology act actually works um, and we need specific physical operation, uh, operating parameters uh, uh, related to three factors. Uh, one is water flow, and then you have the water pressure itself, and then you have the gas pressure. So when you when we get the correct balance between these three factors, that's when our technology in that in that space works and and will produce nanobubbles. So that's you know part of part of the, the you would call it the, the recipe of our of our technology working. And 
we can then utilize uh, different flow of flows, all from small to big within that space. So okay. So yes, it's it's very scalable. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. So basically, I could let's say I've got thirty net pens ac across different sites, and I could say, okay, I will basically run an A/B test. I'll put one here, and I won't put one there. And mm -hmm. we'll, then we'll have a good look at what what it what it brings us in this one. Um, but I could scale up just that net pen with more machines, or would I then have to swap out the machine itself? Um, well, yeah, I mean, we, we would have to you know do do a sizing correctly from from the beginning. Yes, but yeah, uh, we can we can uh, we can add add uh, nanobubble generators. Um, I mean, we have to look at look at uh, such a case like that from uh, one. The, the biomasses need that's number one uh number two redundancy uh and of course you know being able to you know mod have that that modular add-on if if the conditions the pre-existing conditions uh change over time uh, yeah because most farmers all farmers have oxygenation systems in place mm -hmm. when when i come to you and i say okay i'm happy to try this do i need to make a compromise on existing systems um, I would say, well, when it comes to uh, making a system from uh, as a retrofit, like you're saying now, um, in 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 the sea, uh, no, there's no there's no uh, no big issue around that. I mean, if you want to use uh, an animal generator in a, a land-based facility, uh, some piping may have to be changed uh, and that may, may not be possible. So then a retrofit solution would have to kind of may, maybe uh, be in, be in, uh, in uh, separate pipes. But uh, as long as there's a will, there's a way we can utilize existing systems. We have to look at, you know, case by case. Every retrofit uh, uh, that, we, that we've done has been different. We've, we've, we've looked at it from the, the the need of the of the of the farmer um and what what the objective is and there's always been a different way of, of solving it uh, at these different sites so we're a we're a water quality uh expert uh being able to it's it's not a uh, uh a blueprint solution we put we were able to to take our technology and put it in um according to the customer's objective mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, so far deployed systems, let's take Norway as an example, since you are located there. Um, what is the experience in the net pens so far? Oh, and the net pens, uh, they are, they are absolutely uh, delighted about the, the, Im the immediate efficiency of, of, of nanobubbles, uh, oxygenation efficiency. Um, they see that the, the ox oxygen levels rise extremely quickly compared to, to traditional methods. Um, uh, for example, um, delousing. We have delousing vessels uh, in Norway where they use mechanical delousing uh, operations. Um, and they have to crowd the fish. Uh, and if, if the levels are below 80% in, in the sea, and that can definitely happen during, during the summer months, or even DO situations in September, October, very, very typical. Um, they can't, they can't uh, treat the fish. They can't crowd them because that's uh, they. There could be mortality rates because of that. And with traditional methods, they've seen that that uh, it takes a long time to get the oxygen up to where they to where they need it. And they're and they're throwing away both oxygen to the seagulls. Because it's bubbling up, and uh, too much uh, too much uh, energy usage um, producing that oxygen that's going to the seagulls. Um, so when they used our technology, and they were at all the way down to sixty percent uh, DO saturation in the sea, um, they used our technology. And I have um, one of our customers came came to us and said that it they used six minutes from sixty percent. And up to over 100 percent in the in the crowded crowded space of fish, and they were crowding about 200 uh, around 200 tons of biomass in uh, at a time. 
So that meant not only uh, not only the obvious savings, but they were able to get things done right then and there, get going, treat the fish, and then move on and 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 keep treating the fish uh, for sea lice treatment. So that's that's something that that we get a lot of uh, a lot of uh, um, feedback on that they really really uh, enjoy the efficiency in itself. Mm -hmm. That is, a, that is an impressive time, especially considering the amount of water that is involved here. Um, do you have that case study in, in your case study file? Um, that, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Okay. So everybody listening, you will be able to find that in the chat um, and you can browse the case studies for yourself. I've seen another one, which I, which I found quite impressive, um, also around delicing with, uh, I think we can name them because you named them in your files, uh, which is Moi. And um, there has been an extension of the delicing time. They were able to delice the fish for 80 minutes longer. Yes, that's now, a really case. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, could you uh, could you talk about their setup? Um, the setup is is that um, well they they. Uh, what they do in, in Chile is is they 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 treat the 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 fish with with, with chemicals, right? So for the de, the the sea lice treatment process, and um, and in that they have so what we do is we we add add the chemical in through the nanobubble generator, so it becomes part of the oxygenation process in itself, and and with this uh, efficient oxygenation, uh, we then as you said, we're able to increase the treatment time by 80 minutes and achieving 85% removal of adult sea lice. And um, yeah, so this is this is helping the fish become uh, calmer, not stressed, and therefore, uh, because they have this uh, enriched ox oxygen environment, an efficient way of keeping that oxygen at, a, at an optimal level, uh, we're able to then uh, increase that treatment time. So yeah, that's basically the the achievement, the result in that in that case. Okay. Mm. Well, thanks very much for getting into that. Um, so we we have quite a global audience in aquaculture. Um, we spoke about Norway a little bit. Uh, let's let's talk about some other systems. Um, let's say you take this to, to smaller systems in Africa, for instance, or you take it to the very ambitious shrimp RAS projects that are happening in the Middle East. What is your approach there? And can these people also talk to you? Are you also the man for them? Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, it's just a reach out to me when it comes to all of these, these different uh, uh, cases. Um, our, our, uh, what our target is, I mean, where I'm, I'm based in, in Norway and, and the, the target that I'm, that I'm looking at is you know, fin fish uh, production. Uh, but you know they can they can reach out to me via via LinkedIn via uh, the website or even directly to my email address um, that mm -hmm. I'm sure you will uh, you will make yeah. it. <laughs> yeah 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 uh, yeah we'll we'll drop all of this information in in the chat in a moment and you'll be able to reach out to Jan Eric uh, with any questions you might have. I see we have already have 17 questions piling up in the Q and A. I haven't even opened this file. I'm opening it now. Um, this will be interesting, mm -hmm. um, and I think to allow for enough time, we're, we're going to get into the Q&A straight away. Okay, most recent, most upvotes. Um, for everybody who has not voted on a question yet, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to just jump into, I'm going to give you only a minute because there are 17 questions, to just jump into the Q&A at the bottom of in your toolbar, and uh, make sure you upvote the questions you find most interesting. While we will do that, uh, you know, Eric, do, um, you obviously have an American accent, but uh, your your background is Norwegian. Uh, yeah, I was um, I was born in Seattle, and uh, uh, my uh, my family actually emigrated from from Norway and had all their all their kids in the U.S. And when I was um, four years old, four or five years old, uh, I moved back to to Norway. So I have siblings that, and aunts and cousins that uh, that live in the U.S. So I've kept my uh, kept my uh, accent. <laughs> All right. But I've been living in Norway since since you know starting school. You know. 
Okay, okay, very good. Um, okay, let's jump into these questions. For everybody who's raising a hand, thank you very much for partaking in this conversation. But due to the amount of people, we'll have to stick to the questions that are coming through the Q&A. So please, if you have a question, make sure it goes into the Q&A. And uh, if it gets uploaded to the point where we have time, we'll get to it there. Now, the, Steve Pomola, Pomelo, I'm going to butcher your names. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Steve. Okay. You just passed by Quinton Merlin, who asks, is fouling a concern with industrial, is fouling a concern with industrial scale nanobubble generators? If so, how is this managed? What is the ideal method for introducing the nanobubbles into the water? Those are two. So let's get to the fouling first and then the ideal method for introducing the nanobubbles into the water. Um, uh, when it comes to fouling, fouling of the, of the equipment itself, I, I gather. So uh, when it comes to um, our equipment, it uh, would obviously uh, in, in water, um, uh, for example, seawater, um, it, would, it would grow. There would be, um, um, what do you say, organics, uh, or you know, it, it would need to be cleaned. Uh, and uh, what that is, it's very, very simply, uh, simply done. We 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 add a uh, a uh, acidic uh, um, cleaning cleaning agent in through the oxygen intake, and uh, leave it for five to twenty minutes, and then it's just uh, uh, circulated out. So you have a, a CIP uh, cleaning process, and it's very, very simple. It's uh, our our Customers will uh, will will attest to that uh, it's extremely easy to to maintain, but to keep it to keep the 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 uh, the efficiency up, it's 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 natural that that we would need to 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 clean it, and the frequency of that is all all dependent on the application itself, but it's always it, it's always good to kind of uh, uh, set a uh, a routine, for example, once a month, once every other month, all depending on the application, of course. Preventive, good. preventive cleaning. And the tag on question to that was, what is the ideal method for introducing the nanobubbles into the water? The ideal method, oh, for introducing the, the nano, the, so the finished oxygenation, oxygenated water. That's all dependent on the, uh, on the, the application, of course, but uh, as, one, as one can see in some of these pictures, I don't know if you've seen, you've shown any, but, um, we, we use different, uh, discharge, uh, orifices, uh, and we can, we can, we can discharge it, you know, fairly right below surface, uh, and still not get any off gassing. Um, this is all, you know, of, of course, dependent on, on, uh, uh, the natural laws within, you know, Henry, Henry's law, um, temperature, uh, and, um, salinity. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's okay. the, the the ideal is is to uh, to introduce it at a specific uh, orifice size um, beneath water, of course. Okay, and the pictures Jan Eric mentioned there, you'll also find in the deck. So just review the chat, and there'll be a document and his contact details if you have any more questions around the introduction of the bubbles into the water. The next question from Steve Pomelo, who asks, can the dissolved oxygen supersaturation cause gas bubble disease in fry? Not, uh, we, we've done, we've done uh, testing of that. And uh, I mean, not, 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 no, not the, uh, the, um, that, uh, sorry, again, the, the, that disease. Gas bubble disease. Yes, exactly. No. Um, we've we've done testing of that, and the the nano bubbles are so small that they 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 do not affect the fish in that in that sense. We've done testing uh, up against injector technology over one month uh, in one closed containment uh, um, pen, and the, and another with nano with uh, nano bubble. Uh, so both in both in tanks and in pen for post smolt, uh, we've we've monitored uh, fish health both when it comes to gill health and when it comes to uh, skin and mucus uh, layers. And uh, there's no detrimental effect to uh, either. Okay, very good. Thank you. I hope that answers your question, Steve. 
Now, the next one is Melissa Romans, who asks, can you expand on how nanobubbles affect the biofilm thickness? Also just a reference with evidence. That is a very, uh, that is a very good question. Um, what we do see is um, when it comes to, uh, that's actually that's actually a question for our R and D team, um, where we 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 just uh, we're, we're just getting getting back results from a from a, a RAS facility in Norway actually, where we see uh, see the uh, the uh, improved uh, effects of of the of the kinetics in, in the bio in the biofilter, and um, as I as I mentioned um, earlier, the um, the um, what's it called again? Um, Brown in motion. The uh, no, negative no. charge. No, the um, the 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 what's it called? Um, standing still here. So back in 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 January of last year, there was done a uh, a, uh, a study. Um, of uh, and a review of, of uh, bubble aeration in, in biofilter um, to reduce the total ammonia uh, nitrogen of, of, a, of a RAS system, and uh, as a conclusion of that, the, uh, as I as I mentioned, the bubble size itself affects the microbial uh, composition of the nitrifying bacteria, and that's consequently determining the, the growth and thickness of biofilm to improve the the efficiency of ammonia removal. So. Um, this is, uh, and this is what we also saw uh, in, in, a, in a study that, that we've done now in uh, a Norwegian RAS, RAS facility, where we see how uh, the, the, uh, the ammonia conversion is, is, is um, more efficient once we added nanobubbles. Um, to get more into the details of that, I'd like you to send me the questions, and I can get our R&D team to, to answer, because that's getting into the weeds of things. Yeah, yeah, okay. Th thanks, Jan Eric, uh, for, for that uh, openness to uh, answer questions directly. You'll find his email address in the chat, Melissa, so feel free to send an email to Jan Eric. Very good, moving on. You've got a lot of questions to answer. We're at 28 now, so uh, I hope you I hope you got something to drink. <laughs> Is dissolved. Nick Price uh, asks us, is dissolved oxygen from nanobubbles available to fish in the same way? Uh, the answer is no. Um, nanobubbles in itself uh, are not, uh, they're not, uh, what's it called? You can't detect them with, with, a, uh, with a sensor like you do with, with dissolved oxygen. So they're not available uh, as oxygen in, in itself. Um, but they are there to, as I as I mentioned er earlier, to to buffer that existing uh, oxygen level that is being used by the fish, right? So it's it's creating uh, a more stable oxygen environment. Okay. Uh, the next one from Margus Rebane: Can you use nanobubbles with ozone for outgoing water disinfection or treatment? What will be ozone? Sorry, what will be ozone dissolving efficiency and how much can leak? Well, uh, when it comes to ozone, we can absolutely use our equipment to, to dissolve uh, ozone or, or add uh, that as, as, as nanobubbles. Um, when it comes to that space, I mean, um, we have, uh, when it comes to ozone, it's, it's a lot more, it's a lot easier to, uh, to, to, to dissolve than oxygen. So you will get a, a higher percentage in. And using nanobubble technology, you will get even more. It will be very, very efficient. Um, uh, and with nanobubbles, as I mentioned, this, this uh, buffering effect is, is, is very much uh, the same when it comes to ozone. And ozone has this decay period called half-life. And with, uh, with nanobubbles, you're actually able to increase half-life, which is very, very interesting. Um, yeah, but um, this, is, this is an area, I mean, obviously ozone is, is uh, uh, a little bit more uh, dangerous to people and you know, in, in, in this type of environment. So 
we have our own, we have a team that, that would then you know, take care of and making sure that uh, such an application is, 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 is uh, correctly sized. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The next question is coming from Frank Schelling. This is, uh, I think, an easy one for you um, about efficiency. So how many percent of O2 put into the water is transferred to the water and how much is leaving to the atmosphere? Well, um, our number when it comes to uh, to transfer efficiency is uh, is over 85 percent. Um, that's uh, and. It, it can be more, it can, it can be less. It's all, it's all depending on the application and the water quality and field conditions that we're, that we're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course there is, there is some uh, relevant factors there that, uh, that do, do play a role, but all in all, 80, over 85% efficiency oxygen transfer uh, rate. Okay. And uh, if I might add it on myself over time, like how long does that remain in the in the body of water at that uh, whatever you oxygenize it to level? Again, that's that's depending on on the field conditions, temperature, all it sets. Uh, but uh, if you're comparing to other methods, um, all of the uh, all of the properties that I've that I've mentioned will, if you're comparing uh, two traditional methods. You will you will uh, experience that our that our uh, uh, oxygenation method will give you more long lasting oxygen level. Yeah. Okay, very good, Frank. There are also statistics and sources to that in the deck that we dropped in the chat. So have a good look there. You should find all the numbers you're looking for in the document. Moving on to Roland Weiser. Hello, Roland. Good to good to see you here. Um, we did a webinar with Roland last year. As a, a, they are. Uh, he was involved in a very, very exciting project um, with a large RAS farm um, in Germany connected with sustainable agriculture. Mm -hmm. um, hello, Roland, for waving. <laughs> does, uh, uh, does the negative charge of nanobubbles have an effect on pH value or hydrogen ions? Um, that is a good question. That uh, Yes, yes, it does. But I cannot get into get into the details of that. I would have to ask you to please send me an email on that, and then we will get into the weeds of that of that question. Absolutely. Excellent. Okay, Roland, feel free to send your email. <laughs> Moving on. Next one, uh, Mark Laberge. Last I was told, the smallest unit was around forty thousand Canadian dollars. I can not convert that in my head to USD, but Google will do that for you. Um, he is asking if there are any smaller units available so consultants can could let clients try. Yeah, absolutely. There are smaller units available. There are there are smaller units, yes, but I mean we have to we would want to we would want to you know uh, get to know the application and everything. I mean. Send a, send us an email and uh, and we can uh, we can find out uh, what can be done. Okay, very good. Yeah. Um, yeah, Mark, make sure to put your country in in that email um, so they know where to find you. Yeah, I hope that helps you. Very good. Moving on to Neil Stallard. Nano bubble generators usually produce micro and bigger bubbles as well during the production processes. Are there nano bubble generators that produce only nano bubbles? That is a good question. Uh, when it comes to that, um, yes, our system also produces uh, some micro bubbles. As I said, we have an eighty-five uh, over eighty-five percent efficiency, and we're talking about you know the, the dissolved oxygen uh, rate. Then you have um, some of that becomes uh, micro bubbles, and um, actually a, a very small percentage actually saturates the, the water that we that we convey through our through our equipment um, with nanobubbles. Um, the um, the thing is is that um, yeah well, once more I think the you tell. once more the the um, the question uh, the nanobubble generators usually produce micro and bigger bubbles as yeah. well during the production process. Right. Sorry. Sorry, I lost my chain of thought. Uh, the uh, another thing that you have that you have to be aware of is that when you have very high saturated uh, uh, water, 
oxygen saturated water we through through our cortex when when the na when when the water is is transported through our cortex um just a foot not even not even just immediately after our cortex the 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 water will be super saturated even up to levels over three three four hundred percent of 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 oxygen uh, uh, saturation and when you discharge this underneath water through through a through an orifice it will become turbulent and then when you do that it's it, you can see um uh, oxygen going in and out of in and out of solution right so th there's also that that visual part of it that you have to be aware of and what is happening in that in that discharge okay thanks very much the next name is finnish so here we go Piscalier Haumakiri, I think. I'm going to try that. How much oxygen can you dissolve in water, oversaturate at low pressure, 0 0.2 bar? Ooh, 0 0.2 bar is, is pretty low. Uh, we would like to try to keep it, you know, at least 0 0.5, uh, but but comfortably around one bar when we when we use our, our, our technology. Uh, it can absolutely go higher, um, but... Uh, to in in the uh, around the va the va the the value proposal of, of keeping energy consumption low, we would like to keep it around that area. Um, but yes, uh, like I said earlier, um, we we saturate uh, we have saturation up to yeah, some somewhere between four hundred fifty and five hundred uh, um, percent. Okay. Uh, he, he's got some add-on questions here. Uh, well done. You put three questions into one. Um, since the bubbles don't collect into bigger bubbles and they don't float up, are all is all oxygen not dissolved still in nanobubbles in the water? Well, yeah, that's a good question. Um, uh, the, the nanobubbles themselves, um, they consist of, of, a, of a very uh, small portion of the, uh, of the, the added oxygen. Um, so it's... Um, over, uh, over from the time that they are introduced in, into the water, and for for a period of time, they're actually they're they're buffering that water, and then it becomes uh, then uh, the nanobubbles when they're if you, you can't really call it depleted, but uh, when they 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 still remain in the water and and have the 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 all the other benefits that that I've that I've mentioned, yeah. Um, I hope that answers. Oh. The yeah, and then he's, he's, he's got a very good follow on here. Uh, will these remaining nanobubbles dissolve naturally in the water right away when dissolved oxygen is lo gets lower in the fish tank? Or will it be used in other, will it be used up in other chemical reactions, right? The, 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 the biofilm. Both. 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 It's, it's both. It's both. I mean, it's um, um, in the driving force of when the nanobubble, I'm sorry, the, the dissolved oxygen lowers, that's when the buffering happens. But also, um, if the water has contaminants in it, um, they are the because of the surface charge. They're they're attracted to uh, other hydrophobic surfaces. And if if we're talking about this uh, uh, pathogenic uh, material or something that that uh, that they can react to, they will then they will react and collapse, and they will uh, uh, gener uh, generate a, um, uh, an immediate uh, hydroxy radical as a a mild disinfectant. Uh, so, in in best case, they can inactivate um, a smaller, weaker type of pathogen, if you if you will, or or weaken it. Right. So um, they they get used up in 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 that sense as well. Um, you can utilize uh, nanobubbles um, uh, strategically in a system um, if you want to enhance your uh, your AOP, your uh, advanced oxidation process, if it's ozone, UV, uh, that could give a small extra boost to that system. For example, if it's if it's underdimensioned, um, adding nanobubbles uh, so that they become part of that oxidation process is is uh, uh, is a way to add value or, or enhance such a system. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Moving on to the next question from Dries Rondeles. Again, I apologize. 
how does nano bubble, how do nano bubbles affect the growth of the fish, especially in freshwater systems? Well, I mean, uh, we're talking about uh, oxygenation in itself, um, and it's you know it's uh, very there's a lot of literature around uh, keeping um, the optimal uh, oxygen levels, uh, and with nanobubble technology, that enables you to do so, uh, keep it keep it stable at a, at a level that you want. So that's one part of it uh, in order to. To give them that that the, the conditions for for, for growth and, and welfare, um, and then you have the indirect uh, way, uh, and that is that the nanobubbles are actually treating that water, um, reducing uh, uh, total suspended solids, um, all of the and, and all of the, the the benefits of the nanobubbles in a, in for example a um, rat system. Uh, well, then you, you will then create a, uh, a better water quality for the fish. So that's indirectly um, creating um, better conditions for the fish in that sense. Okay, very good. Um, Matthew Els asks, are nanobubbles appropriate for flow through aquaculture systems? Yes, absolutely. Um, a, we have that in, in several uh, flow, through, flow through systems today. Um, it's, um, I don't have any, any, any other answer to that. I mean, it's, um, it will, it, you will increase, uh, increase um, oxygen efficiency. You will, you will be able, because of the, the, um, uh, the there are other properties, uh, the, the hard shelled surface of a, of an animal um, gives uh, a mechanical property of scouring. So you have, uh, when you, when you, when you, transport um, nanobubble enriched water uh, at, at higher velocities through through pipes they will then penetrate the biofilm up if there's biofilm present on on the pipe walls ripping it loose to surface and uh, and keeping those pipes clean um, and since the the, the nanobubbles have a um, have a negative surface charge they will coat that the, the piping um, preventing uh, biofilm from easily uh, reforming on those surfaces. So that's okay. another, another area where you can add that and also in a, in a flow through system. Excellent. Um, I've just been told by my assistant that the files haven't reached everyone yet in the chat. We'll fix that in a minute. Uh, so just stick around and we'll make sure all the contacts and the documents get to you. Um, Sarah Richard asks us, there are publications showing that nanobubbles decrease the amount of certain heterotrophic pathogenic bacteria. On one hand, this is very interesting, but on the other hand, the question arises if nanobubbles would negatively affect symbiotic aquaculture systems, for instance, bioflock. Can you comment? Um, that is a question that I would have to uh, I would have to take care of uh, by email. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I can't comment on that here now. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Sarah, feel free to send Jan an email. I am dropping everything in the chat as we speak. Just give me a second here. It does let me. It lets me. So please have a look at the chat. Uh, there is Jan's Eric, uh, Jan Eric's uh, LinkedIn profile. Here's the email and the case studies in the link below. So that should be everything. Moving on to Frank Schelling, who has a very practically oriented questions. We like those. Is the transfer efficiency dependent on the tank depth and what is the optimum depth? Um, the, well, I mean, as, as you, uh, the, the, the efficiency itself isn't, isn't uh, in that sense, but what I, what I want to direct your attention to is the fact that nanobubbles do not have buoyancy. Um, and if you have a, a flow direction in that, in that tank, you want to try to um, get it in, into that, the, the direction of that flow where it's starting so that it can, it can follow, follow the flow process in that, in that tank. So adding it uh, in the, the, the direction of the, of the, the water flow uh, would be beneficial. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Frank, I hope that answers your question or that helps you. And we are moving on to Mark McClue, 
In layman's terms, can you please clarify the correct quantity of nanobubbles to state uh, approximately in one milliliter to express the difference between alternative aeration methods? Thank you. Diana, let me know if you understood that. I had my troubles. Yeah, um, well, it's, it's about, it's about um, how many nanobubbles per milliliter of water we're able to, uh, to, um, um, to add. Compared to alternative aeration. Well, I mean, there are, well, there are no uh, nanobubbles in that sense. I mean, yeah. the, uh, alternative aeration would have larger bubbles, but uh, we're, we're able to, uh, we're able to, uh, to add, uh, depending on the water quality itself, um, we're, we're able to add up, up to um, 1 billion nanobubbles per milliliter of water. And that's, you know, essentially less than a teaspoon of water uh, that we can add that, that amount of nanobubbles to. Yeah. Um, and again, that's dependent on, on the water quality. Okay. Very good. Um, we hope that answers your question, Mark. Moving on to Halianto, Halianto. Um, in oxygenation, are we using pure oxygen or just air? Both. I mean, well, I mean, the thing is, is that that's a good question. Um, the thing is, is that um, pure oxygen, um, it, it all depends on the objective. So pure oxygen would be beneficial in, in, a, in a situation where you are uh, trying to uh, meet the, the oxygen demand of the fish, obviously. Um, we, if you're using uh, an oxygen generator, that, that oxygen level would be a little bit less. We're talking 93 or 95%. Um, uh, but if you're going to be using air, I mean, in some, in some aquatic systems, that's enough. But for the, uh, for the aquaculture culture industry, we're talking salmon, trout farming, that such, we would want to focus on uh, oxygen in itself. If you are in a uh, in a, a RAS system, it could be uh, better to uh, to to use air um, at a specific point in the process. Say, for example, around your your drum filters, right? You would add you would add uh, nanobubbles uh, just using using air, right? Because the, the objective is to improve uh, the the total solid the suspended solids removal. Um, Another area would be uh, for your heat exchangers. You could actually add nanobubbles before going into the heaters, heat exchangers by using air. And, that, and, and that's related to the, to the property that, that I mentioned earlier about uh, the scouring effect. So when you do that, you add it in through uh, to keep those heat, uh, heat exchangers cleaned. And anyone that's, that's, that's been working in a, in a facility where you have heat exchangers, there have been a few swear words when it comes to uh, dismantling that to, to keep it clean. So, <laughs> um, and that's where, that's another area where, where we can add a little bit of value. Yeah. Okay, very good. Um, we have two minutes left, uh, at least one question, maybe two. Torsten Vammen asks, what is the power consumption per kilogram of dissolved oxygen? Um, the, well, when it comes to uh, the, I would say that um, I don't have exact that number, but I would say I can tell you that um, our our SAE uh, on that uh, uh, is around eleven uh, kilos per hour. So that's that would tell you a little bit about if you if you uh, know about the uh, um, the SAE of uh, of, of transfer. Yeah. Okay. Tosin, I hope that answers your question. You should be able to find for more information also on the deck we put in the chat. Yeah, as well. Um, the, the last question from Gustavo Salazar, and then we sadly have to wrap up. Uh, there's still a lot more. Thank you all for the questions. Gustavo is asking us, is there any research about which size and or concentration of nanobubbles is better for the different aquaculture applications? Well, I mean, I'm, I, we have a huge library of, of uh, scientific uh, publications. Um, I can, uh, if you send, send me that question, I can be sure to, uh, to find, find whatever relevant information we have on it and send that to you. Perfect. Thank you very much for asking, Gustavo. Jan-Eric will answer your questions directly. 
please all refer to the uh, the information provided in the chat to reach Jan Eric. Um, he is Jan Eric at Um Also on the website, you'll find more information around the case studies. Uh, the day right case studies are also in the chat. So please reach out. Thank you very much for attending, Jan Eric. Thank you for taking the time and the breath to answer all these questions. I thought it was tremendously interesting to learn about this very, very interesting new method to oxygenate water. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm looking forward to see where Mola is going and if nanobubbles become the new standard. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Moritz. Have a great day. Bye-bye, everybody. See you on the next webinar on the fish side. Goodbye.